There are several critical success factors to focus on during commissioning in order to set your project up for success. Commissioning cannot be an afterthought. You need to start with the end in mind. The cost of commissioning is not a large part of the project budget, usually less than 5%, but the cost of delays during commissioning can be astronomical. Two important factors need to be considered when making decisions on a project, the project burn rate and the cost of one day of operations to the owner. The project burn rate is the daily cost that the project accrues for each day of activities. The daily project burn rate includes the cost of all equipment, materials, contractor and consultant labor costs, and interest and escalation costs, the all-in costs of the project each day. Later in the project during commissioning, the project burn rate can become quite significant. For example, each day of the project could cost well in excess of a million dollars each day. In other words, each additional day of commissioning adds more than $1 million to the final project cost. For this reason, the project burn rate needs to be considered during all stages of the project. If a decision can be made during the design stage of the project that can save one day of commissioning, then this decision needs to be made in the best interest of the project. The commissioning team can help designers identify these design considerations in order to make commissioning go smoothly later in the project. The other item to consider is the cost of one day of operations to the owner. If the owner can generate millions of dollars in revenue from operation of the system, this needs to be considered. If one day delay of the project prevents the owner from generating this revenue, then this is a costly delay. Decisions made earlier in the project need to be made to prevent this from happening. As an example, a proper QMS needs to be implemented during installation activities. If a cable is missed during installation, this needs to be identified and the cable pulled during construction. If not, the missing cable will instead be identified during commissioning, causing delays to testing the system. While the missing cable may only cost, say, $5,000 in labor, materials, and only one day to install, the cost of that one day delay during commissioning can cost the project millions of dollars due to the project burn rate and lost revenue from the owner. The missing cable becomes a very expensive cable to the project and owner. These critical success factors for commissioning need to be considered during each stage of your project to avoid these costly delays. Number one, early involvement of the commissioning team. The commissioning team needs to be involved in the project right from the start, when the first design packages are being developed and the first contracts are being written. The decisions made early in the project have a significant impact on the success of commissioning and the success of your project, and the commissioning team can help earlier groups understand the impact of their decisions. For example, commissioning requirements need to be included in procurement contracts for factory acceptance testing and site acceptance testing. If these requirements are not included at tender, it will be difficult to make sure equipment is properly tested in the factory to reduce the risk of on-site testing. As well, design packages need to align with how the systems will be tested in the field, and designs need to ensure that operation and maintenance requirements are considered. There is no point to create a design that cannot be operated in the field. Equipment will be operated for the first time during commissioning, and any operational issues will cause delays to commissioning. By having the commissioning team involved earlier in the project, costly delays during commissioning can be mitigated. Number two, commissioning team continuity. The commissioning phase of your project is led by the commissioning manager, which is often the first role filled on the commissioning team. The commissioning manager role should be filled early in your project during the design and procurement phase. When this role is filled, it is critical that this individual stays for the duration of the project. Commissioning discipline leads should be involved early in the project as well to help identify technical issues that could cause delay during commissioning. Continuous leadership and technical involvement is important to have knowledge transfer from the early stages of the project and to ensure plans and processes established early in your project are fulfilled once your project enters the commissioning phase. Commissioning team awareness of any technical issues from earlier in the project will help later issues be resolved promptly. Number three, commissioning team skill set. While the commissioning team continuity is important, 
It is also critical to have the right skill sets on the commissioning team. The skill sets and experience of mechanical, electrical, and automation lead roles reporting to the commissioning manager are important to ensure more junior members of the commissioning team are provided guidance and that these lead roles are able to effectively execute their portion of the project. Too often, a junior member of the construction team is assigned to be part of the commissioning team and thrown in the field to try and make this stuff work. Without knowledge of the commissioning process and how to test equipment in the field, delays are encountered causing cost increases. This poor individual quickly becomes overwhelmed. And as more commissioning activities start on the project, the challenges become bigger and more expensive due to the fast paced and dynamic nature of commissioning. Instead, experienced commissioning team members need to be paired with more junior team members to provide guidance, ensure commissioning goes smoothly, and so junior team members can gain valuable experience to become better commissioning team members in the future. It is critical to have experienced individuals with the necessary skill sets for the commissioning activities taking place to ensure there are no costly delays to critical path commissioning. Number four, alignment of senior project leadership. The commissioning manager works closely with the engineering manager, construction manager, owner project manager, operations team, and senior leadership, as these groups provide important inputs to the commissioning process. Without support and buy-in from these groups, the commissioning process will be difficult to execute successfully. The commissioning manager therefore needs to pay close attention to the working relationships with these groups and manage expectations in order for commissioning to be successful. There is no room for big egos on projects. All leaders must be making decisions in the best interest of the project rather than in the best interest of their group. If one of the senior project leaders starts to make decisions that are only in the best interest of their group, phases of the project become siloed. And since commissioning is the last phase of the project, any problems from earlier in the project become even bigger problems later in the project during commissioning. The project manager and senior leadership need to ensure this does not happen and that a collaborative culture is fostered during every stage of the project. Number five, adequate funding for commissioning. Budget needs to be allocated for commissioning at the beginning of the project and maintained through all phases of the project. Too often, earlier phases of the project are over budget and commissioning budgets get reallocated to cover these costs, leaving little funds for commissioning activities. As mentioned earlier, the cost of commissioning is typically less than 5% of the project budget. This, however, does not mean that the cost of commissioning can go to zero. The proper funds need to be allocated for commissioning in order to avoid costly delays during commissioning. The savings of hiring one less person on the commissioning team rarely save costs to the project if delays are encountered. Number six, early commissioning planning. During the design and construction phases of your project, this is when the commissioning team will develop detailed plans for commissioning and startup of the new systems. It is far too late to develop detailed plans during the commissioning phase. This must be done in advance in an order to prepare the detailed plans and sequence for commissioning. Detailed commissioning planning includes developing the sequence and schedule of commissioning activities, as well as preparing the equipment, checklists, and commissioning procedures to execute the work. This detailed planning must be done in advance of on-site commissioning during the design and construction phases of your project and the inputs prerequisites to the sequence recognized by all project participants. Prerequisites must be identified in an integrated engineering, construction, and commissioning schedule where engineering deliverables are identified as prerequisites for construction activities and construction prerequisites are identified for commissioning of systems. This is where strong relationships between the engineering manager, construction manager, and commissioning manager will be beneficial in order that all groups can work collaboratively towards the same end goal of the project. Remember, a one day delay to commissioning can become very expensive due to the project burn rate and the cost of one day of operation. The commissioning team needs to be prepared well in advance to avoid this and all other groups that proceed commissioning delivering on time to avoid costly delays. A well-developed commissioning plan early in the project helps everyone on the project understand their role and what is required to set commissioning up for success. Number seven, systems-based management. During installation activities, 
The construction team is focused on installation of individual equipment. As on-site commissioning approaches, the thought process needs to transition to a systems-based approach. What this means is that each individual piece of equipment on its own is not much use to the commissioning team. A group of equipment, cables, pipes, control systems, and more is what is required to make equipment function as a system. For example, a pump on its own is not very useful. In order to be tested as a system, the pump requires a motor, power to the motor, piping, valves, flow meters, pressure sensors, a PLC with programmed logic, and cables to interface to the equipment and instruments. Any one of these missing components will prevent the system from functioning. If the pressure sensor is what triggers the PLC logic to start the motor and pump, then a missing sensor will prevent the system from functioning. If the PLC logic has not been fully designed and bench tested, this will prevent the system from functioning properly in the field. And this requires that a system-based management approach be taken for design and construction deliverables. All components of the system are required to be completed at the same time in order to move forward with commissioning. Any missing design or construction component will cause delays to testing. Number eight, strong QMS during construction. Strong QA QC processes need to be implemented on site as part of a well-executed construction QMS or quality management system. This includes both infield inspection and paperwork review. This is critical to identify any issues with the equipment installations as early as possible to prevent delays during commissioning. The issue we discussed earlier about the missing cable is a good example. Properly executed QC processes would identify that a cable was missed during installation and have it pulled well in advance of commissioning. Point-to-point -point checks will confirm that all cables are terminated correctly and mega checks will confirm that there is no damage to cables during installation. These checks identify potential issues with the installation before the commissioning team arrives to test the equipment. And since multiple equipment is being installed in parallel, there is often float in the schedule to address these minor installation deficiencies. If instead, the QC process does not identify issues during construction, these issues are deferred to commissioning where minor deficiencies can have a much more severe impact on critical path commissioning activities. Accurate as-built information is critically important as part of the handover from construction, as the commissioning team needs to know the as-built configuration of the systems in the field. The handover of systems from the construction team to the commissioning team must be a collaborative approach, and this is where a strong relationship between the construction manager and the commissioning manager will be beneficial in order that they work collaboratively towards the same end goal of the project. A properly implemented QMS during construction is therefore required in order to mitigate the cost of poor quality that causes project delays. Number nine, define construction milestones and deliverables. An integrated construction and commissioning schedule is critical to commissioning success. It is rare that all construction activities are completed on the project before commissioning starts. Due to the large size of projects, Commissioning will start on one area of the project that is complete, while construction activities continue in another. Construction and commissioning activities will overlap for several months on the project. These overlapped activities need to be well orchestrated, and an integrated construction and commissioning schedule with defined construction milestones and deliverables makes this possible. Each construction complete milestone is defined as a mechanical completion. MC defines the systems included in each milestone handover, the QA QC checks to be completed on the equipment being handed over, and the date that the MC is to be complete. Each MC defines the acceptance criteria to be achieved at each handover milestone. Several MC milestones will be taking place over several months, and these are defined in the integrated schedule. This allows all project participants to understand what is required and when it is required in order to align with the overall commissioning sequence. If just one of these critical success factors is not addressed, the commissioning phase of your project will be challenging. The project team needs to start with the end in mind in order to set commissioning up for success, and the commissioning team can help with this by being involved in the project early. To learn more about commissioning, please join my free three-day mini course on commissioning and startup. The course is free and flexible to take any time and gives a great introduction to the commissioning process. 
Sign up at the link in the description below. See you on site.